I feel like that was an all new kind of boomerang for me to actually just like move shit around right during the countdown, you know? <laughs> but um, hey, it is what it is. It does what it does. So good afternoon, good evening, or in my case, very much good night, people. How are you doing? Apparently that's one of the words that I'm not supposed to say. That and buy, like, subscribe. Apparently these are all a whole bunch of words that, um, you know, you're not supposed to say because it causes people to turn the video off. I'm going to make a video about that. So, I'm dark today. Interesting. Uh, could be because it's night time. Could be because I don't have the additional um, lamp on. It could be that I changed my ring light. But I thought it was bright enough that it would compensate. Hang on, let me see what I can do. No, don't fall over. Oh, the whole ring light's going to fall over. Spill the drink, don't spill the drink. The wife will kill me. All right, let's have a look. Nope, oh, that's me off. That's pretty bright, but I'm not sure I'm happy with the bright white. Maybe I'll just turn it down slowly. I mean, I could always go funky. What is this? There we go, disco. Nah, I'll give it a go over there. That should be better. I still got, I'm still messing around with certain settings and that sort of thing, and I really hate the fucking over light, overhead light here. Um, if you haven't guessed, today is, well, I mean, this episode, I should say, is research day. I <laughs> make you okay the normal. Lovely. Thank you. Um, I've already set it up so that in about an hour, we'll redirect over to Jeff and the uh, demonic possession witchcraft trial. But... Um, I thought I'd spend the time getting back into the swing of various things and uh, looking up the things that I have next to no knowledge of. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not intending to deep dive into a whole bunch of things. I'm intending to skim over some stuff and j just so I get an understanding of it. Like I know nothing about the Tonsil Twins case because I haven't really had the chance to sit and watch that stuff, uh, which th this is how bad it is. I'm not actually sure. Is that the Tonsil Twins case? Like is the Tonsil Twins case, um, the Laura Owens case. I'm assuming that it is, but that's how little I've paid attention. So that that's sort of where I am. I'm looking to just get up to date on various things. Um, the other thing is I'm I'm trying to come up with some ideas for some, for some evergreen content. Um, didn't really get a chance to do much in terms of like, um, what can I say? <sighs> Still waiting for you to research the seagull song. <sighs> Oh, what the hell? Hang on. Let me move the chat so that it's on live chat. And I should probably... Oh, no, I've got the... I've got the chat open for... Um... Rumble, so that's fine. And close that down. Put a social stream across there. Okay, so what is it? Seagull. The Seagull song. Is this the one by Bad Lip Reading? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Clayton Eckert and Laura Owens? Yeah, that, see, that's what I thought. And it's it's one of the things that I've paid next to no attention to. Okay, and if all your thoughts... I hate Brenda, and a bad guy hit me in the shin, and I peed all in my pants. <laughs> it's nothing a little music can. Is that, is, is that seriously it, Stingy? I just need some clarification here before I get too deep into this, because this looks like it's going to be hilarious, but at the same time, I need to know. Not showing? Uh, I should probably do that, shouldn't I? Fuck. I'm, a little, I'm a little bit itchy. If For those of you that haven't noticed, the um, DMZ zone has been trimmed up, but it also means that I'm a little bit itchy. Heard, not seen, that's it? Okay.
the fuck am I watching? Hang on. Just realized I have to reset the counter. purpose of this is that it's a song written based on lyrics from someone reading the the bad lip reading. I get it. So why? <laughs> like I, I get that the internet is a weird place and that you know there's plenty of random ass crap. Are you drunk or is the song crazy? Why not both? Bad lip reading, a channel that's content is based off horribly changing the lip reading. in the movie. I can't remember. Had R2 had his memory wiped by this stage? Or he would... It, what? Wait, did he ever actually meet Yoda? How does he not recognize him if he did? That's a tangent for a whole nother stream. That's a tangent for a whole nother thing. Get drunk and then do a... And what? I would get drunk, but blood tests don't mix. Fair enough. They've done a few Star Wars songs, Avengers, and a lot of sports content. It's literally called Bad Lip Reading. Okay. Mm. Didn't like it. Listen, man. You I'm don't not really your miss friend. Much at the moment. Mm. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. That's not creepy at all. The other day you got a vices notification like a day later. You'll find yourself humming this later and go fuck you, stingy. Probably. All right, now, uh, where do I want to start? Uh, uh, actually, hang on. Uh, hang on this. Did I spell it right? Hang on. The Walking Dead one's also good. Okay. 
Clayton Eckert and Laura Owens. They're just copy and pasted that. Think about it. Why am I watching these videos? Oh, there's an entire wiki. Arizona Republic, attorneys for former bachelor staff. Okay, maybe I'll do the wiki because that would let me go from pretty much the start to learn what I need to know. <sighs> okay. Clayton Ecker, the star of the 20th of season 26, The Bachelor, had a one night fling, allegedly just oral sex, with Laura Owens on May 20, 2023. 11 days later, after he refused to pursue the relationship with her, she claims she is pregnant. Oh, hang on, let me put some music on in the background because this is just going to be me talking for the most part. Now trending. What is this? Mm -hmm. Druids designed a program to feel pain in Star Wars. Yeah. That didn't. Drafted a dating contract to give Clayton, stated that she would have bought the but she claimed she was pregnant. Drafted a contract stating she would have bought the baby if he agreed to date her, but he still refused. On August 1, she took him to court to establish a parenting plan for the babies, now twins, and sent upwards of 500 emails and texts to him from more than a dozen different accounts. She went public with the case in September when he still refused to date her. So this is just creepy stalker chick, right? Is that what this boils down to? Get a link to the song? Yeah, sure, hang on. I'm gonna throw it in chat. Thank you. Gave him two blowies and claimed she was pregnant with twins. Went public with the case in September when he still refused to date her. She claims under oath on November 2nd that she was 24 weeks pregnant. Just saw her OB a few days prior. Laura and Clayton are both granted orders of protection against one another. As of December 28th, she claims she's no longer pregnant, with zero explanation of what happened to the twins. Clayton Eggett announces on Instagram that he has become a real estate agent serving Phoenix and Scottsdale areas. She creates an LLC for the purpose of... Wait. She created a company for the purpose of real estate and rental and leasing. Owens reaches out to Clayton Eckert and via LinkedIn for, retail, for real estate assistance. The two meet for the first time in person have an, and have an intimate encounter, which he describes as oral only sex. The following day, Eckert tells Owens that the hookup was a mistake. Uh, Clayton makes his intentions clear that he does not want to pursue a relationship with her. Apologizes for crossing the professional personal boundary. Breaks into tears and refuses to accept it. She also asks him to continue to be as her realtor. Owen starts telling Eckert that she cannot continue to have him to be a realtor if he doesn't want to pursue the relationship. Uh, consistently tells her that he wants to assign another realtor, but she will not accept. So she's already got, like... Yeah, John, that's the point. And I, I, I kind of got a little bit sick of being left out in the dark, so I'm just reading through and learning. Um, Clayton makes his intentions clear. Blah, blah, blah. Eckert, uh, Eckert I asks Owens to leave him alone, informing her that he's considering contacting the police, and he blocks her number. Eleven days after their intimate account encounter, Owens emails Eckert a photo of her first positive pregnancy test. She altered ultrasound images as evidence. Okay. Not too many spoilers, guys. I want to react naturally to this. <laughs> um, he purchased a pregnancy test and asks Owen to take it in front of him to confirm her pregnancy. She goes to the bathroom and the result comes out positive. She just happened to have a prepared fake one in Immaculate Conception the first time I'm hearing it too. Well, I mean, look, 
see, the irony is there have been instances where shit like this happens, but at the same time, it's like, well, um, one of those cases that makes it embarrassing how many dates she gets compared to me when she's fully batshit crazy. <laughs> uh, Owen's Iceland story is published in Chicken Soup for the Soul. Owen's emails Eckert to try and convince him to sleep with her and sleep with her and told him that she would get an abortion if he agreed to date her. Owen sends Eckert's parents emails them inviting them to her ultrasound. She was taking HCG pills. Just FYI, there's websites that sell fake pregnancy tests and fake sonograms. It's kind of messed up. Yes, I'm aware. I have unfortunately in my lifetime come across them. Not personally. Dealing with matters for clients. Some some of it can get really weird really fast. Um, <clears throat> I once sent Clayton a photo of her alleged ultrasound. She can view the ultrasound at Clayton's interview with them at the hour 23 mark. Oh, wow. They've, I like this wiki. I'm Katie Maloney. I'm 30. Oh, you could have, like, timestamped it properly. Just got... What would they say? Uh, one hour twenty-three. One hour twenty-three. Oh, hang on, I can see it flickering. There we go. I mean, I, I, you know, I. Okay, so this is the alleged sonogram, huh? Not the first male she's done this to. I highly doubt that it is too. Maloney rhymes with baloney. <laughs> Yeah, a bit weird, isn't that? Um, how many weeks is she supposed to be pregnant at this stage? With the ultrasound? Ultrasound shows the date of the that the encounter happened, not the date of the last missed period, which is what the doctors go by when determining fetal age. Oh, no shit. She fucked that up, didn't she? Oh, what a dumbass. Owens files petition to establish paternity against Eckert in Maricopa County. Owens emails Arizona Suicide Prevention Hope Conference to get Eckert to, as, removed as a guest speaker. Also, oh, she so not only is she trying to like reel him in, she's also trying to fuck around and ruin his life as well. Owens files first motion to communicate and a child support worksheet. Owens emails Eckert warning she will file a motion for contempt if he's not agree to meet up with her privately. That's not a thing. Eckert answers Owen's petition to establish paternity, files a motion for contempt. Oh, so she actually tried to file a motion for contempt. Owen's completes four-hour co-parenting and divorce class, files parental education certificate with the family court, files a second motion to communicate. Owen's provides information about the case to a reporter to a New York Post via email. A newly created Reddit account, UtrainingTrade4145, attempts to post th four threads titled Clay... Clay what? Titled Clayton Scandal, Clayton the Dad, Clayton the Dad with one missing exclamation mark, and Clayton the Dad with the other exclamation mark changed. Okay. On the subreddit R Bachelor Nation, two days later the account again attempts to post multiple posts about the Clayton Scandal in the different subreddit of The Bachelor. All posts were removed by moderators. Owens files for an expedited motion to seal court record because the media outlets the New York Post and page six have expressed interest in publicizing the case. Oh, I know about a new lawyer. That's why I want to get across this. I want to make fun of him just like everybody else. It's confirmed she's done this several times. People would be shocked if they knew how many people try to do this. They really would, Lowraw. They really would. Oh, Lowraw, you've got no idea. All I oh. The, the reason that I'm interested in this is him. I don't really care about the case. I get that it's batshit crazy. I'm laughing my ass off at him. <laughs> um, Alright, where are we? 
Arizona Real Estate Department since it could have noticed that he violated realtor conduct. This was after Owens filed a complaint against him a month earlier. Oh, she dobbed him in for, for allegedly screwing her. Owens goes to the Sun and Medium with an, with an anonymous article it's released on the second day of Eckert filming the new Pickleball show. There's a show around Pickleball. You're in for a good ride? Yeah. Let me put it this way. In my personal opinion, he's an attention hound. She's on her 13th lawyer. Um, <clears throat> Owens posts, I am the anonymous woman in the Clayton scandal. Here's my proof. Here's my story on Reddit. She provides other Redditors with links to her public Dropbox with photos of her pregnant belly, texts and texts and emails with Eckert. Eckert takes, uh, takes his side of paternity test. What? Takes his side of paternity test. Owens is photo photographed competing in an equestrian jumping competition, allegedly 20 weeks pregnant with the twins. No baby bump is seen. She's a horse girl. Just to add insult to injury with how batshit crazy she is, she's a horse girl? Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> and you know what? You, if there are any horse girls watching, you can't get mad because you know. You know full well. She's not the smartest, apparently. DNA test results come back. Eckert announces little to no fetal DNA on his Instagram story. Owens claims the results were ongoing and recorded a call with the lab to support that. It's important to note that all of Owens' DNA test results the same little to no fetal DNA. According to Eckert, Owens then sends him an ultrasound that he believes was doctored. He also claims she later refused to call the OBGYN's office to verify the ultrasound's authenticity during their earlier resolution conference. She files for a protective order against Eckert. Dave Neal breaks the story. <laughs> so this is where Dave comes in. That on October 11th, Owens had circulated her alleged sonogram video to the media, which was later proved to be a, a, an edited six-year-old sonogram from an unrelated YouTuber. There were several things off about the ultrasound video, which are shown in Neal's video. Owens later claims that Greg Gillespie hacked into her account and released the fake sonogram. Wonder if she's friends with Mr. Hands. Oh, no, low roll. I would not put him and um, Judge Grudge in the same category. Like, don't get me wrong. The, the, mm, this guy has probably seen the success of certain YouTubers or law Twitter accounts and wants to be big. Let's, let's put it that way. Put it up in, I put a video in Discord that was made based on this. It's hilarious. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Um, Eckerd wins his injunction against harassment hearing. Oh, hang on, I missed something. Owen sends Neil a cease and desist letter for his coverage. Oh, bite me. Owens files for a temporary restraining order against Neil. The judge denies the request on First Amendment concerns, as well he should. Eckert wins his injunction against the harassment hearing. Owen states in cross-examination that she's 24 weeks pregnant. Hang on, wait, what? Math doesn't add up for me. Hang on. Just bear with me, chat. Don't ruin it for me. I need to come to conclusions on my own. Um, so, 27, 9, 2023. Through till... What can we say? 2nd of the 11th, 2023. Include end date and capital. 37 days. Four months, seven days. So theoretically, she'd be 25 weeks, not 24, but that's neither here nor there, really, just by my calculations. Looks like you have horns. Oh, yeah, from the It's 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 not it's not an it's not amazing positioning, I'll be perfectly honest, but um not a lot I can do about it. Um Owens has seen drinking an energy drink during the hearing. Eckert claims that Owens got him fired from speaking gigs and reported him to the Real Estate Commission. 
bad as it sounds, that's not illegal, and you did stick your dick in crazy. That is something that you'll have to deal with. Judge sides with Eckert due to the 500 plus messages he received from her after he asked her to stop contacting him and blocked her. Neil is served with a lawsuit from Owens alleging harassment and revenge porn. What? The photo she cites as revenge porn was shared by Owens in her public Dropbox evidence folder that she has sent to various media outlets as well as the Bachelor related subreddits. Um. What? <laughs> I only stuck it in her mouth two times. Yeah. Hey, he still stuck it in crazy. And frankly, as bad as it sounds, I feel like that end is more dangerous when it's when they're crazy. Allegedly, Ozzy. Allegedly. But did he stick it in? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, she must have only had she must only have had access to that. Again, not the smartest. Yeah. Um. Where are we? She posted it to 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 forums. And she's claiming that he would... Okay. To be fair, I will give her... And uh, like, like you guys know, I try and give the benefit of the doubt if there is any technicality, if there is any whatever else. The legislation here would suggest that it could still be revenge porn if he took a publicly available image and disseminated it with the malice and intent to embarrass her. It is a tricky situation. There are certain ways that the legislation can be sort of twisted and skewed and that sort of thing. I don't know what what the what the laws are specifically in this in their um, jurisdiction, but I would be making a damn good argument that it doesn't really count given the situation. Okay, and I'm just gonna say it. I'm really annoyed that the chat box is so squishy. Um, no, that's the hype train. It's the hype train actual. Chat box. Overlay videos. Where is? It's a browser source, I think. Nope, that's a different browser source. Leave it alone, Hayden. Leave it alone. You're getting distracted. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so video services of Owens alleged baby belly moving wildly during the court hearing against Eckerd 27 days after she photo she was photographed without a bump at the horse jumping competition. Judge throws Owens a suit for emotional damage against uh, throws out the suit against Greg Gillespie. News leaks that Laura Owens is trying to change her name to Emily Wilson. Why? He went to the press with all this before when she uh, before she went to a lawyer. Huh. It isn't corn, she's fully clothed. Oh, no shit. Okay. Sounds like some bad anime character. Character, I suck your dick now, I'm pregnant. Well. Uh, Just runs on soon. Hans files a police report on Gillespie for violating his protection order by allegedly posting her private information to Reddit under various alt accounts. Detectives found no evidence of her claims and closed the police investigation. I'm shocked. Owen sends mass emails to podcasters threatening to sue them for defamation if they cover the case without platforming her. All I'm going to say is that um, extortion doesn't really count in, in terms of defamation. Hey, Tom Nash, how are you? Good morning, but it's time for me to go to bed. No worries, Deanna. Hmm. Reality Steve. Reality Steve. Do I know who Reality Steve is? Oh, he must be a podcaster. Okay. Offers Owens a platform to share her story. She does not accept the offer and instead threatens to sue him. Owens pulls out of the Las Vegas National horse jumping competition after it leaks on Reddit that she signed up to compete while allegedly six months pregnant with twins. Yeah, don't do that. I mean... If you're looking to delete the twins in Minecraft, there are two very distinct, very specific activities that could cause that to happen. One is falling down the stairs repeatedly. 
The other is engaging in horse riding in a competition. Didn't she try and email Lord Talk with Mike? May well have. Let's see if it's... Yes, there it is. Lord Talk with Mike covers the case. Ha! Um... Rumour that she may attempted to compete under an alias, but the rumour has not been corroborated. Uh, Owens and Eckert's paternity case gets moved to an inactive calendar because of lack of movement on the case. Law Talk with Mike covers the case and offers Owens a platform to prove her pregnancy. She does not accept and instead threatens to sue him. Law Talk with Mike got an email from her after posting Dave Neal. Okay. Uh, Neil breaks the news that a third DNA test came back with the same results as little to no fetal DNA. Around the time, Owen submits criminal complaints against Neil uh, with the Los Angeles District Attorney. Owens publishes a blog post to Medium um, entitled Unveiling the Unbearable, My Battle Against Cyberbullying and Online Harassment. Woman, you brought it on yourself. Uh, Eckerd files a motion in family court to extend the dismissal date to definitively on record settle if he is or is not the father of the alleged twins. Owens posts a video on her Facebook page that opens with, My name is Laura Owens, and proceeds to speak for over six minutes about being cyberbullied. The video is a shot from her neck up. The, it, uh, the sound she makes are of a crying nature, but no tears are actually seen for the entire video. <sighs> Crazy and all, but this chick <laughs> makes me look sane. Huh. <laughs> Oh, good, Shelby Fogg. Huh, that one came through really quick, but it did not read out the thing. Uh, thanks for the company while you do assignments. You're very welcome. Do you want me asking what you're studying for? Or have I asked that before and I'm being a dick now because I've forgotten? Sincere apologies. Um, <clears throat> she specifically calls out neil reality steve and reddit sleuths for alleged cyberbullying you mean people trying to prove your claims wrong are cyberbullying you oh sweetie don't don't get into a lawsuit you'll have a you'll you will literally have a no, you will figuratively have a private investigator crawling up your ass to determine whether or not this, those twins existed if they haven't already in this in this circumstance she even poked herself in the eye to get tears and it didn't work does she not know the trick about putting a pin in your pocket Surely you guys know that. Like when you try when you're really trying hard to cry. Like if you're like it was an actor trick that I got well, I mean they used to talk about it at when I did Okay, news flash. When I was younger, I did acting and singing and dancing lessons because, you know, I thought maybe I might have the personality for something. And here I am. But um, you know, there used to be, you know, how to get yourself to cry on cue, how to get your voice to hit a couple of octaves, how to, you know, do all, all sorts of things. It was, you know, every Saturday for a couple of hours. Got me out of the house, that sort of thing. Um, no, but thanks for letting me know that trick. Um, well, it was a little, it was a, it was a little known fact amongst the kids that if you could not get yourself to cry, what you would do is you would wear a pair of pants that had a hole in the pocket, not that kind of hole, and you would um, put your hand in your pocket and you'd pinch until you could, um, until you either learnt to cry on on command or you forced the tears yourself. <laughs> Many tricks actors used to cry that are well known. Yes. Um, Owens also shared Patreon paid subscriber private stream footage of Neil saying things about her over the past few months without any context. Once again, let it be known that Neil has never once said her name. He refers to her as Jane Doe. Oh, that's right, because they wanted to provide that she... Ha they didn't want to give her any... Um, no holes in pockets, guns fall out. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you that. That was good. Um, or showing any photos of her. About an hour and a half, the video disappears from her public Facebook page. She claims it was only intended for her close friends and family. Oh, bullshit. Beginning of the video with my name is Laura Owen seems to dispute that. Yeah, you think? Hey, Ben, they've done that. Oh, yeah. The Medium article by Regina Falange. <laughs> no! No! Woman, are you serious? Regina Falange? She actually stole Phoebe's name from friends? Oh, hello, Regina Falange. Ken Adams, nice to meet you. Yes, I used to watch Friends quite a bit. 
I don't really care what the Gen Z is or millennials will th think about it. As far as I'm concerned, the show was funny. Yes, you take away the laugh track and it's very disturbing at different times. But you know what? So... That cannot be her real name. I, re I refuse to believe that. Um... I mean, most sitcoms these days, you take away the laugh track and they're not funny. She's been in other cases. No shit. Can't watch sitcoms because the laugh tracks are so annoying. I'm glad I removed the laugh track, but I do have the applause. Alright. Regina Flandy. I can't believe she did that. Was taken down by Medium. Interesting that Medium continues to leave up her defamatory post about Eckhart and Dave and takes down Regina's cogent rebuttal of Owen's post. What? Okay, so that wasn't actually Owen's. Like, okay, now I'm confused. How, how do we wind up with additional women in this case? So if she, is she Regina Falange if she was rebutting what Owen's put up? Because surely she doesn't have multiple personalities that are conflicting with each other. Laugh tracks were used every line, even when they were not funny. Yeah. That when Seinfeld, the, that and Seinfeld were two shows I never laughed at. Though I did love the episode where Kramer tried stand-up comedy and just screamed racial slurs. Fun fact, they get a lot of laugh tracks from old recordings from the 40s and 50s. So a lot of laughter you hear is from dead people. Yes. I think the person that did the Wilhelm scream is dead now too. Um, Chase Jones, widely believed to be Owens, see details below, submits to have his Google and Patreon subpoenas quashed, claiming he has nothing to do with the case. Dave's lawyer has reached out to Chase J. Jones, it's a fairly generic name, several times asking for a quick face under to verify he's real and put the matter to bed, but he's been met with silence on the other end. That's not... That's not suspicious at all. Laura Owen sends a cease and desist letter to TikTok YouTube personality Liz Neptune regarding the use of the video Owens had posted on Facebook that's been used in a different video by a different creator, not Liz Neptune. <laughs> that creator is not, not affiliated with Liz, and yet Owens claims she has proof that they are, but has not provided the proof. Owens and Neptune engaging brief email correspondence ending with Neptune telling Owens to never contact her again. Owens reported that the correspondence as harassment to Liz's local sheriff's department. Of course she did. Owens retains a new attorney in the family court case against Eckert, files to dismiss the petition to establish paternity. Why? She claims she is now pr not pregnant, and once the case drops, she's also saying in her motion that because of the portion of Eckert's legal fees were crowdsourced, that he isn't entitled to any award of legal fees. Oh, bite me. Uh, okay, so we're already into January. Oh, good, we're almost there. All right. A new article about the case is published in The Sun. Owens responds to the article saying that she firmly stands by everything that she's claimed previously and that she had a positive pregnancy test at one point, which was also documented in court documents. Just because you put something into court documents does not make it legitimate, given that you haven't provided the evidence that it's true. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. No, don't, 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 don't be suspicious. Um, that confirmed her pregnancy and was corroborated by the test at the medical facility. Owens files to quash her deposition from Eckhart and his attorneys. Good luck with that. Owens' new attorney, Lexi Lindvall, withdraws as counsel just one week after she takes on the case. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And it was over the Christmas break too, so she had no idea what she was getting into. Just made it into work. Oh, that sucks. Apparently the paternity thing might have been to get some rights so she couldn't claim that she put them up for adoption or whatever. Mm. Uh, January 17th, Laura Shirt fails to show up for a deposition. Clayton shows up for his deposition and she attends as well. Clayton's lawyer files an expedited motion to continue the trial and a motion for additional trial time. Laura Owens receives this harassing Facebook post from what appears to be a troll account she calls the police about these Facebook posts. Audio of this public call can be found here. The public Scottsdale police report can also be found here. Don't really care about either of those. 
He can't. I'm, I'm worried that if I hear her voice, the siren will appear. See you, John. I'm doing Apple River Verdict. Don't know a single thing about it. it. Research day is literally about me catching up on things that I know nothing about. Um, if we have time, I might look at that. But um, no, not at the moment. Uh, the account just for Clayton is banned on X. Why? Clayton's lawyer files expedited motion to set virtue status conference. On Laura's alleged due date, she posts a, posts a blog post about miscarriage that is so cruel, insensitive, heartless, immature, and irresponsible that we all that we will not link it here. No shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, this is just for Clayton, so this is an incredibly one-sided thing. Probably don't. It's a whole other rabbit hole and extremely contentious. Okay. Um. Status conference is set for February 21st. Account Justice for Clayton is reinstated on Twitter. Oh, good. So it only took them... What? Just over what, 15, 16 days. Judge denied Laura's motion to quash her deposition. The next few days, the Justice for Clayton sub on the Reddit was banned and reinstated twice. Status conference is held. Laura Owens and Clayton Eckerd were present. Judge denied motion to seal and dismiss. Judge approved. Extended time for hearing and Owens needs to be deposed. Judge set the deposition to be on the 1st of March. June 10 is the new hearing date. Owens claims that the, in this hearing that she thought she was pregnant in November, but later found out she'd miscarried one to two months prior? But isn't November where they've got the footage of the baby belly like moving around? She claims she had a second trimester miscarriage and didn't realise that she can't explain where the bodies of the babies went. Now I'm just mad. Uh, <clears throat> a statement from the set November 2nd hearings contradicts the claim. Steve Carbone, Reality Steve, also claims that in correspondence with her, she claims she was still pregnant in December. It was discovered that Laura, Laura M. Owen's de December 8th post on Medium had been edited from what she'd posted initially. On her original December 7th post, she initially included, however, I won't be sharing update updates regarding the status of the pregnancy with Clayton. I kindly ask not to receive congratulations or engage in discussions with Clayton and about Clayton and my pregnancy. This post is not intended for that purpose. She has since removed that portion of the post. The original post and edited the link are both here. Laura M. Owens emails Clayton's attorney, Greg, Wood Greg Woodnick. I'm not going to lie. The, um, the Woodnick thing made me laugh. Like, I get that, you know. Um, what was I going to say? Um, Woodnick. That just made me think of the exterminator from The Simpsons. Look, you've got termites, but these are no regular termites. They're no Woodnicks. In order to fight the bugs, I must become the bug. Be a bug! <laughs> like, seriously, oh my god. <sighs> um, uh, so she emails him directly instead of going through her lawyer, which is a no-no. Corey Keith stating that she intends to sue Eckert for $1.4 million for breaches of contractual and fiduciary duties, as well as emotional distress. What contractual or fiduciary duties? What position of trust did he have over you where that, where that would have led to, led to a detriment? You blew him and then claimed that you got pregnant. I can't for the life... I would love to see those court documents. I'm sure that they're here somewhere, so... She lodged a bar complaint against him. Of course she did. Okay, but I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. States in the email that she will not sue Clayton if he drops a family court case against her and that he has until the day before her deposition to agree to the terms. That's called extortion. Woodnick also mentions in the email that three of the doctors that Owens claimed to have seen for a pregnancy have responded to the HIPAA request stating they have no patient by the name of Laura Owens. 
Uh, she finally attends a deposition. Eckert releases a statement to the press stating that Owens, during the deposition on March 1st, admitted to tampering with the ultrasounds from Southwest Medical Imaging. The press release can be read here. The Sun releases an article covering the forged pregnancy records. Greg Woodnick files a motion to compel. In the motion, he states that Laura claimed to have passed two fetal sacs and has sent the picture to her sister and spoke to telehealth sometime in October or no, uh, September or October. However, no evidence has been shared by Laura. Corey Keith submits to a motion to withdraw as Owens' as attorney with client consent, making him the next in the ongoing list of attorneys that refuse to represent her. Also, The Sun retracts their 7th March uh, article, but it lives on here. Huh. Greg Woodnick files a motion for joint hearing pursuant to Rule 5A4. Motion seeks to have the court rule if Laura's protective, uh, if Laura's protective order against Clayton can be dismissed due to being founded on both implicit and explicit fraud. Motion seeks for the judge to conduct a joint hearing and order relief to Clayton, as the court seems just. Maricopa County Family Court docket shows that Laura has retained new counsel after her former lawyer, Corey Keith, withdrew. Oh, this is Douche Canoe! After the motion for extension of time was denied by Judge Marta, the April 1st deadline passed with no response from Owens' side. Owens' attorney files a motion to compel lunch and for alternative relief. And yesterday she filed a bar complaint. Where she get all the money for this for legal fees? That's a damn good question. I think that might be the reason why a bunch of them pulled out, is that she probably didn't put money in trust and there was no retainer. Um, just my own personal opinion on that, that we don't know. In Arizona, late-term miscarriages require a death certificate, which she doesn't have. Technically, she could face criminal charges. Huh. Okay, given that the bar complaint happened on the 10th, which was yesterday America time... Uh, sorry. Yesterday for me... No, it's still yesterday for you guys, because you're just waking up. That's right. So, oh, her dad's loaded. Uh, okay. Point is, has anyone actually looked at the bar complaint? What do we got? We got, we got, we got 10 minutes. I can have a look, quick look at this. Uh, state bar of Arizona filed on behalf of the complaint. Request for protective order sealing information protecting the client. Protected by attorney-client privilege. Wait, what? He didn't respond to the bar complaint? The State Bar of Arizona filed on behalf of the complainant a request for protective order sealing information protected by the attorney-client privilege and or ethical ruling ethical rule 1.6 as well as logging credentials for medical records from the respondent and the public state bar does not object to the request and no timely objective ad, objection was received from the respondent good cause appearing it is ordered that they grant the request further order that complainants logging credentials for her medical records and email communications with former counsel be sealed and kept confidential from the respondent and the public oh okay that makes more sense she's making sure they can't access her medical records uh, sealed material should be open and viewed only by order of the committee, by a presiding uh, disciplinary judge, the hearing panel, the board, or the court for the use of such body and the proceedings, the parties and the pending proceedings. Otherwise, only upon notice and the opportunity to be heard by the parties and witness, otherwise the subject of the information. Huh. Why? So this isn't, isn't actually a, a complaint as much as this is a... Complainant requests the following information be sealed from the respondent and the public. Complainant's initial charge. Media assistance and guidance needed in response to the ethical concerns and intimidation in a legal case. Oh, it's your wife's birthday, huh? Oh, and you remembered it. Congratulations. She's from Scottsdale, Arizona, which is a wealthy area. Huh. Huh. Well, as the overlords had pulled out. Mm-hmm. Received via email on Sunday, January 6, 2024, contains the complainant's login credentials, password, username, and hyperlink to medical records. Email communications attached to the complainant's initial charge. Conversation with Lexi Linville. Lexi withdrawal letter. Email to Lexi concerns. Da -da -da, correspondence. 
email communications between the plaintiff, da -da -da, complainant asserts these communications are confidential and protected by attorney client privilege. Complainant's request for protective order, request for confidentiality, the reason for sealing the information is that the complainant provided information in her initial charge that may be considered individually identifiable health information pursuant to the HIPAA privacy rules, specifically logging credentials that would access the complainant's medical records. So she was a dumbass, well, I mean, either she or one of her many lawyers provided details and now they're looking to make sure that they can't utilize it. Which is fair. It's her private medical information until ordered otherwise by a court. <clears throat> Didn't she just claim she never seen an OB for a pregnancy? I got no clue. That, that's why we're here, people, so I can learn. Alright, so we've got order sealing stuff. Oh, the exhibits are brilliant there. Complainant's login credentials for her medical records and email communication with former counsel be sealed and kept confidential from the respondent and public pursuant to Rule 60. Sorry, Rule 70. Okay to me. Request for protective order sealing for the record. Don't really see an issue with that. Reviewed your detailed submissions. As previously stated, you are currently involved in ongoing litigation. The basis for the allegations are mostly from the pleadings themselves, which is why I'm suggesting speaking to your current counsel, Mr. Keith. Issues at this stage are more appropriately raised with the court. The court is the most familiar with the facts, rules, statutes, and case law of your case. It's inappropriate for the state bar to get involved in active cases. She tried to drag the state bar in. Except under circumstances not applicable here. If the court concludes that Mr. Woodnick acted inappropriately, please provide us with a copy of that written finding for our further consideration. Okay. State Bar recently received a bar charge against you. I've determined that further investigation is not warranted at this time, and our file has been closed. The charge has been dismissed. So, you tried to have a bar complaint filed. The bar looked at it and went, eh. Hang on, where's my... Oh, I'm missing my damn... Um, bloody hell. I'm still missing audio sounds on here that I need to put on. It's supposed to be like a buzzer. <sighs> oh, well. I'll just use this. Uh, charges no inverse impact on your standing of the state bar records. Show a consumer charge that was dismissed. Pursuant to Rule 71, the bar file may be expunged after three years. Okay. Because I'm curious as to what the complaint actually says. Um, what we got? that's the expedited motion to attend, which we don't need. So, complaint against Greg Woodnick. Mr. Potter, I appreciate your patience and understanding regarding my complaint against Greg Woodnick. Despite my hopes for a cessation of personal attacks in his filings, the situation has deteriorated further with the attacks becoming increasingly vitriolic. Such behavior, I believe, is highly uncharacteristic of a legal professional. Um, you ever been in a vicious level of litigation? The personal attacks can get quite nasty, even between the lawyers. In closing documents of the three most recent filings, which I find contain egregious violations, while there are numerous instances I could point out, I've chosen to quote a few that I find particularly offensive and unbecoming of an attorney, which have added hours to preparation of this complaint. These quotes underscore the personal nature of his attacks against me and heighten my apprehension about facing him in a deposition. Dittums. Petitioner initiated the underlying action when she filed her petition, alleging that she was pregnant with the respondent's twins after a night of oral sex. This time, Petitioner chose a television personality on which to perpetrate this fraud, and not only faked the pregnancy, but attempted to extort him to date her in exchange for an abortion of fictional twins. <clears throat> what? How is that a person... <laughs> The entire action by Petitioner is predicated on fraud upon the court. Petitioner continues to seek out media attention and exhaust all her potential her procedural remedies to evade basic discovery and disclosure obligations. Perhaps if Petitioner provided the st statutorily required fetal death certificate and verifiable medical records to support that she was ever pregnant with twins that she could uh, look less like, as stated by the Petitioner's attorney, a crazed woman who fabricated a pregnancy. Just joining us is the esophageal knock-up chick. Yeah, well, I'm learning about it now. And we got 
Oh, we got three minutes, so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly run through the complaint and then we'll head over. I, I honestly thought I'd get to more than the Laura Owens case, but I'm glad now because at least now I have a basic understanding and gleaning so I can actually hold a conversation if need be about it. Um, <clears throat> that's funny. All, these statements not only mis misrepresent the truth, but also serve to unjustly malign my character in a public and professional forum. It's a public pleading. He could have gone way worse in the language in that. It is imperative not only that I have it is imperative to note that I have provided ample proof of my pregnancy in my filings prior to Mr. Woodnick's involvement in the case. Pleadings are not evidence. Say it with me, chat. Pleadings are not evidence. You can say whatever you like in a pleading. It is not evidence that is proven at court. Just spotted the freebie chat. Cheers, bud. No, thank you for being a member for 12 months. Damn it. That means that there's, that's another 12 month membership that I'm going to have to try and organize that damn shirt for. Do you know how ridiculously difficult that shirt's become? Because I can't just have it, you know, you can buy one for 30 bucks. No, it's something that I want to be able to give to you guys. But at, at the same time, I can't. What I tried to do was have it on the merch website for $3,000. So if someone really wanted to, they could buy one. But then I could give like a discount code so that it dropped like three bucks. But no, they thought I was trying to scam people. <laughs> Did they get a scientific expert to testify you can't get pregnant from mouth hugs? Not as of yet. As far as I'm aware. She just wants to be accepted into the rule. You'll be 24 months before you get the 12 months shirt. You'll probably get two. Oh, been there, done that with his four-month membership chat. Appreciate that. And bye, Franz, with their four-month membership. My shirt size is 5XL. Noted. All right. <clears throat> um, it's imperative to note that I've provided ample proof of my pregnancy filings. For verification of my pregnancy, you may... Act she provided the fucking login. Oops. She provided the fucking login and the username so that the bar could uphold her com complaint against him. Moron. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You're an idiot. Uh, it is crucial that this information remains confidential and not be disclosed to Mr. Woodnick, which is why they've issued the confidential um, order, which is fair. Should this communication need to be shared as part of the complaint process? I trust that these examples illustrate the gravity of Mr. Woodnick's conduct and the impact it has had on me. Suck a lemon. I look forward to your guidance on how to proceed with this matter. And what does she say here? I want to add to my complaint and articulate my deep-seated concerns regarding the conduct of attorney Greg, Greg Woodnick and by extension the actions of his associate Isabel Rainey at Woodnick Law. In an email sent to my sister, Mr. Woodnick made several baseless and deeply offensive allegations. He stated multiple men have alleged that your sister fabricated pregnancies and medical documents to support her pregnancy fiction. Even if that was the case, he's not the one making the allegation. He's saying what has been provided to him. And continued to defame my character by suggesting a pattern of deceitful behavior, including faked pregnancies as a, rule to, as a ruse to force relationships. These allegations not only completely misrepresent my my personal and medical history, but also appear to contravene the ethical stands regarding truthfulness in the statements of others and misconduct involving dishonesty. I saw my sister daily on Zoom as well as in person throughout my pregnancy. She knows better than just about anyone I was legitimately pregnant. That's irrelevant. <clears throat> Mr. Woodnick's email to my sister sent both to her personal and business emails, bypassed standard legal protocols. She's not represented, so her, what, no letter had to go to her legal representation. She's also not involved in the case, to my knowledge. It directly involves a family member in a, distress, a distressing manner, stating Laura's actions are about to land her with very unle unpleasant legal consequences, including possible criminal perjury charges. Facts. This direct communication, later with undue pressure and threats, rise, raises concerns under Rule 4.2. This is what happens when a moron gets a hold of the ethics of the rules. The dinger didn't work. Oh, really? 
Jeff did find a valid blowy pregnancy. Yeah, and look, and there's the story, like, I'm pretty sure it's a myth, the, the son of a gun or whatever it is. There are instances of people getting pregnant without actually having had sex. They're rare, but, you know, it does happen. Um... <clears throat> Nature of this communication could be seen as a violation of Rule 4.4, which requires respect for the rights of third parties. By involving my sister in this manner and using language that could be construed as threatening, Mr. Woodcock's actions may have the effect of harassing or maliciously injuring another party, which is expressly prohibited by, under the rule. How is it that someone so batshit crazy can be so coherent and cogent? It's like Jurassic Park with tonsils. Seems like it. The actions and statements of attorney Greg, Greg Woodnick, compounded by the public remarks made by Isabel Rainey, represent a pattern of behaviour that is deeply concerning and I believe in violation of multiple rules of professional conduct. I hope the Arizona State Bar will conduct a thorough investigation of these matters, ensuring accountability and adherence to the ethical standards expected of legal professions. professionals. Isabel Rainey, the attorney at Woodnick Law, has further compounded my concerns regarding the firm's ethical conduct. As reported by Jimmy Jenkins of the Arizona Republic, Ms. Rainey publicly commented on the ongoing legal process between myself and the client. Her statement, such and such, has a pattern of falsely claiming to be pregnant. The premises, premise of our motion for sanctions is that this was all a fraud, was made in a context that suggests an attempt to prejudice public opinion and legal process against me. Oh my god. You can make statements out of court. Such public allegations could potentially violate Rule 3.5, impartiality and decorum of the tribunal, by undermining the decorum and impartiality of the judicial proceedings. Oh, oh, honey. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, no. That's not what these rules were designed for. She went full Karen and asked for the bar manager. Yep. Raising concerns about the influence of the extrajudicial statements on the administration of justice, particularly when made during ongoing legal disputes. By publicly asserting a subpoenaed pa a, sorry, a supposed pattern of fraudulent behavior on my part without conclusive evidence. Funny. You know, all I'm saying is that the the allegations of the alleged whatever else could be put to rest if evidence was provided to the contrary as well. At this point, everything they say outside of court is opinion and protected. They can say whatever the fuck they like. Hang on. Hopefully that one came through. Ms. Rainey's statements may breach Rule 8.4, which they will not, which prohibits conduct, conduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation. Public dis dissemination of unverified unverified claims could be seen as an attempt to misinterpret the facts to, to, to the detriment of my character and case. Then bring a defamation case against her. This is not what the they, this is not what the this is not what the ethics rules are for. According to Rule 3.6, trial publicity, attorneys are restricted from making public statements could material, materially prejudice an adjudicative proceeding. Yes. And they must, they have to rise to a significantly higher standard than what has been said. <clears throat> the actions and statements of attorney Greg Woodnick, compounded by the public remarks made by Isabel Rainey, represent a pattern of behavior that is deeply concerning, and I believe in violation of multiple rules of professional conduct. I hope that the Arizona State Bar will conduct a thorough investigation into these matters and ensure accountability and adherence to the ethical standards expected of legal professionals. As a legal professional, it is my personal opinion Oh wait, we already know exactly what happens. It's literally an informal email that basically says State Bar received a charge against you determined that further investigation is not warranted at this time and the case has been closed. Hang on, let me check. That's fucking funny. Her updated thing comes in Monday, February 26th at 3, 3, at 3 p.m. By 1 p.m. the next day. We're not going to worry about it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny to me. Something rises to a significantly high standard. That's what caused all this. True. Poster behind Hayden makes him look like he has devil horns. It's not a poster, people. It's my shelves with my models. I'm, a, I'm acutely aware that at the moment it's bad. I will try and rearrange things or move my chair or something, okay? Um. Anyway, we really got to get across to Jeff because he's going to kick my ass now for being late two nights in a row. But um, thank you all for helping me get a handle on this and providing some context. Um, very much appreciate it. And yes, I'm going to keep saying um, and buy, and like, and subscribe, and hit the bell, and all the words you're not supposed to use to in order to get people to leave, apparently. Apparently, these are all the words that if you say, you're supposed to, you know, it causes people to not watch the video. But um, thank you all for being here. 
And as always, hang on, let's do it properly. Say it with me, people. Say it with me. As soon as I find the button. Say it with me. You. No, I am not a piece of shit. You slash I have value, and you slash I contribute to society. Well, it's really stupid saying it like that. Um, but as always, people, stay healthy, wealthy, and wise, and I will catch you on the flip side. Cheers, peeps. Also, I forgot, um, don't forget, tomorrow night, tomorrow morning, US time, tomorrow night, our time, Lady Overlord is joining me for the Lady Overlord takeover. Jeff's going to join us for the first bit. I'm going to send out some invites to some other people as well. Make sure you come and, like, um, give her a little bit of encouragement. She's a little bit nervous, a little bit paranoid, because I haven't really got a plan, she thinks. Oh, I've got a plan, but she doesn't know that, which I think is hilarious. But, um, yeah, just be there or be square, basically, people. If you... If, this is your chance to get to know me a little bit better because she's already said she's going to throw me under the bus. So I'll see you all there. Now, head over to Jeff's and I will be right there. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.